Hi everyone, today I want to announce a new video series. So I'm going to be doing my very best to record almost every repair that comes in here, whether it's a no fix or a fixable. Doing this for several reasons. One, this will educate people. People will see these videos, other shops see these videos, they will learn from these videos. They will learn what's no fix, why it's no fix, what's fixable, how it's fixed, so on and so forth. That's a major reason. Second is the channel's been kind of stagnant. I haven't been putting up content and I want to challenge myself. I want to see if I can do a video pretty much every single day or maybe multiple videos a day. I don't know, but we're going to try our best to do it. Um, some of them, some of the videos may be boring, some may be exciting, some may be simple fixes, some may be long uh, drawn out repairs. I'm doing my best to kind of limit the amount of time that I'm spending on devices now. Um, if I can't fix it in 15-20 minutes, it's probably going to be a no fix with the exception of one or two cases here or there. Um, and the third reason is documented video evidence that I am doing my job properly. So getting accused from customers of either making devices worse or so on and so forth is getting old. Uh, sometimes, you know, I will no fix something, they will send it to another shop. The other shop will be like, oh, these people ruined your device because of them, it's not fixable, this and that. And that's not true. So having video evidence can be a rebuttal to this saying, here, here's your video, here's um, us working on your device. We did not do what this other shop said. The other shop is just trying to get you to pay them to replace your board. So anything like that. Anyway, so I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be providing a ticket number in the videos. So whoever's board it is, you could see um, if you watch the channel, you could see your uh, repair. Now, before we even get any further from this, someone is going to say this in the comments. I already know it. The ticket number does not have any personal identifying information. There is no way you can get personal identifying information from the ticket number unless you have access to our internal system, which you don't. So it's not really a concern there. Um, anyway, this is going to be ticket number 6716. This is a 2015 MacBook Air that came in with, uh, with no power. Um, I already have the board out. Actually, I was already recording a video and then OBS on my other computer decided to act up. So I'm using my old ThinkPad versus my new Z16. Um, for whatever reason, um, uh, it does not want to support, um, um, hardware encoding and I have an external drive uh, that I'm using and I'm looking at my status light while recording on my microphone and it's flickering off and on while it's writing to the external drive so there's nothing usable there. I don't know why that's happening. Could just be a band bandwidth restriction something. Um, but we're going to be using this old T15G which is actually a decent machine. It's just too heavy to carry everywhere so I got the Z16. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into this board. I'm going to switch over to our uh, microscope here. So this is an A1466 that does not turn on. The very first thing that we do is plug in the charger. On the outside it did not have a green light. It's not going to have a green light here either because um, that screen tearing is terrible. Uh, we've got to fix that. Um, but anyway, we don't have our I.O. connector unplugged so not much we can do about that right now. So the next thing I'm going to do is we are going to measure PP bus G3 hot. And PP bus G3 hot is going to measure, I already know this because again I, I recorded a video, 1.37 volts. So I'm measuring on the fuse over here, 1.37 volts. Now it was really important to note that our SMC on this board has been replaced by someone else. Okay, looks like old rework. Probably not relevant. If our SMC is not working, I would expect to get, you know, 8.23, 8.26 volts. We're getting one volt. So if we have um, if we have one volt, we really need to know what we really need to um, ask ourselves three questions. What's going on with it? So why could we have one volt? Well, we could have a short circuit. We could have an open circuit. Our fuse could be blown or the guy upstairs is not doing its job, which would be the ISL 6259. So really important. I want you to know this. OK. We see quite a bit of these um, A4. A1466 MacBook Airs, and I just got burned by the board, and that could pretty much uh, tell me what's wrong with it. Anyway, we see a lot of these A1466s that are previously reworked by other shops. They find the shorter capacitor, they replace it, it still doesn't work. Well, you need to check voltage on both sides of the fuse after you're done. Check on one side. Sometimes these fuses measure just fine. Um, they will, um, you know, be zero ohms, and then when you're 
find your shorter cap, you replace it, you have zero volts on one side or a really low voltage on one side and 12 volts or eight volts on the other side. Now, I kind of just accidentally discovered what was wrong when I rested my hand on the board for a second. Something over here burned the hell out of my finger. Um, this wasn't just a little mark, it literally left a mark on my finger. I mean, it wasn't just a little burn, it, it, it left a mark on my finger. So, we are going to just probe around here with a little alcohol. Look at that, right there. So we don't even need to thermal image it. We already know what's wrong. This capacitor is bad. Um, so we'll go ahead and replace it. I don't want to melt our fan, um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the heatsink real quick. It's kind of funny when you accidentally discover faults, and that's kind of the um, way I want these new videos to be. They're going to be unfiltered. Like, if I screw up, I'm going to show you. If I find a fault this way, I'm going to show you. I'm not going to pretend, oh, let's go get the thermal imager and found it and find it. No, I just got burned. The being burned led me to our problem, and here we are. So we used some alcohol to localize the short and found our problem. And you could uh, kind of see these caps kind of will have this like fluid that leaks out from under them uh, when they're a problem. Now, this is just a personal thing. You don't have to do this. I always replace the fuse when I'm done because I've seen them blow. I've seen them come back with a blown fuse when the fuse tested fine. So it's always best to just replace it while you're at it. So let's see, this board does have a fuse on it, so we're going to use this donor. I miss working on 1466s. 1466s were so nice to work on. I think they were one of the best devices ever. I'm pulling the cap from our donor. I'm going to place it. I'm going to get a little bit of our flux. Really just want a very small amount. A little too much, but that's fine. That's what I get for trying to precisely dispense it. Oh well. Not a big deal. Get a little more. Just want that join to be a little bit better. Just like so, beautiful. Some of that other burned off, so it's not excessive. And our fuse. Take the Wi-Fi off. I don't want an ugly burn sticker. There's that. I'm going to put a little bit more flux. Come on, come off of the board. There we go.
That is down. I'm going to touch it up a little bit. My iron. Just so it's nice and pretty. Done deal. I'm going to clean up some of this flux. Get the majority with the dry Q-tip first. If anyone's wondering, you could purchase this flux in the description from our website. If you're low on flux. I'm not going to ultrasonic this board. It was not liquid damaged, so we just want to clean up um, all the bulk of a residue. A little, like, film here and there, that's not going to affect anything whatsoever. We just want to soak up the, the globs. Um, yeah, that's not going not gonna to hurt anything to have a little flux left behind, but I do try and clean it the best, best that I can without the ultrasonic. Chase it with another little bit. And that's good. I mean, that's clean. Um, we really don't have to worry about too much of a little bit of a no-clean flux being on a board. Look at Apple's rework boards. I mean, I do strive to be better than them, but a little bit. Um, of course, I'm never going to give something back um, with globs of flux on it, but a little bit is not going to hurt. Um, again, this is, I do want this to be kind of an unfiltered type of content, so we're going to take the heat sink off. Heat sink off. We're going to reapply the thermal compound. And you can see that this is still the original Apple Paste that is um, pretty pumped out and worn out. So we are going to replace that. Just going to clean it. So we don't want to use alcohol or anything like that. I just use, will use just a straight, um, you know, dry paper towel. And then we're going to apply thermal paste. Now, I want to talk about something. Thermal paste application. So as many people know, um, we develop our own thermal compounds here. There's something called the pump out effect. Now, we've experimented with so many different formulas, so many different solid loading concentrations, different dispersant additives like hexagonal boron nitride, um, different types of base oils. And what we found, no matter what you can do, and counting other manufacturers of paste too, you cannot eliminate the pump out effect with thermal paste. There is a way with like a thermal gel type paste that it uses a flash off ingredient, but that adds like a hazard. Um, a toxicity aspect of it. We don't want to do that. How pump out effect really occurs is when you put too much thermal paste, okay? You will have, when you put too much on, it will overflow. And when you overflow, it gives the paste kind of like a slide where it can slip out. So the best way that we found to prevent pump out effect is to spread the paste out over the die. So I'm going to use some of our Alumachill here. I'm going to squeeze out a little bit, right? And I have a flat spudger tool that I am going to spread the paste out over the die. Now, by having just the right amount of paste here, the and if you go a little bit over, that's fine. Um, by, by having just the right amount of thermal paste over the die, it's going to prevent that overspill that will ultimately cause the pump out effect. So we're just going to spread this out nicely over the die. We want to make sure it's fully covered, though. See, I don't like how there's some thin areas here. And this does add like a little, it's a little bit more time consuming, but you know what? Who cares? So I'm actually even going to wipe this up. I don't like how this is going. So I'm just going to wipe it up. You can 
could even apply it to the tool so instead of applying to the CPU. Let's try that and see if that's more effective. And that's pretty good. It's going to get a little bit more in there. And it's also important to note the over application of thermal pay or the under application is just as bad. So we don't want to under apply it. We don't want to over apply it either. And that's more than enough. Once we put our heat sink on, it will spread out just fine. like so and now I would guess that we are going to get fan spin when we plug in our charger versus dead board no PP bus so now I'm going to see if the board if we get fan spin I'm sure we will um, but I'm also going to check PP bus voltage. Yep, that is a spinning. Of course, it's off frame. Always off frame. Um, PP bus is 8.58. So our SMC is working and good. Let's pop this back in the enclosure and let's get this device on its way. All right. So now uh, with our board back in the enclosure, um, we have a chime and we should have an Apple logo. There we go. We have an Apple logo. So this is fixed. Um, so this is a no power. Like I said, there it is booted in the enclosure. This was a nice, easy, quick one. Again, you guys may find this boring, but I don't really care. Uh, I like I want to document pretty much all the repairs we do here, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to edit this quickly, get it uploaded, and see you in the next one, Very, which will be very soon. Thank you for watching.